So they've just sent me a new Holland out. So uh, we've had it up before on demo, ooh, a month or two ago, for a few days. It's, I, asked for, I asked for it again, because it was just quite impressive and I didn't expect to be impressed by it. Um, quite, a, quite a simple machine. Can't get into it. <laughs> we, d we did get into it last time, and uh, that folded up really good access, and all this folds out, so um, just nice to work on. Seems a bit oh, on the face of it, I need to measure, but the wheelbase seems really long, so it should have some good front line push. Nice to see some heavy plate in the chassis again. Let's see the free course for an inch plate round for a stronger less twist good simple hook pretty conventional axles normal hub fare this time the light seems really well engineered and tough seems really well thought out plenty of lights it's built tough I think if you drop anything on it, it'll bend it there, but it's quite a fixable place. Manito headstock, which, well, on this option anyway, which looks like I'd be, oh, some of my guys would be very tempted to start moving trailers around that hook. I think that'll end in tears, Manito option. Nice bucket as well. This is a Cherry Products one. Probably one of the better ones I've seen for a while. Pressure release, that seems to be quite standard now. One thing that I will need to check out is where the cab filters are, because the JCB ones are pretty poor. It's fine, it's fine, these. <laughs> the boom actually looks very similar to the mirror, though. But where is everything? There's nothing there. It seems functional. The Merlot did have the mud guards, as the were, they did sling a lot of muck everywhere. So, whether with this sort of arrangement it'll keep it more contained, but that's really well engineered and executed. Also, the door, the top part of the door does open in the door. That's quite different. I think this will see it torn off. That's quite a big door. It's a bit like a sail in the wind. I can see I can see that soon getting taken out. And if that's missing, the door go right back and probably get eaten by the rear wheel. We've done it a few times now over the years. The cab, wow, that is a really low cab. I could get in there literally without steps. For hopping in and hopping out, that'd be marvellous. Pretty good visibility. Sit a long way back from the glass. We've got the Sonnebergen fence offering coming soon. That seems to have a full window right down, a curved window at that, right down to the floor, which should be interesting. But I'm guessing it's going to be way out of the price category. Crikey, there's lots of storage. Looks easy to keep clean, very wipeable. Go. Will it fit? I don't know. Ooh. No.
There was a Tractor Ted song all about digging a ditch, which I couldn't get out of my head for nearly 10 years. <laughs> so sorry, I don't want to start singing that again. Hello, so I'm just doing some ditching. Stood in the bottom of the dike now. Good, it's good walking. It looks like a gravel bottom. Just going through to the other side. These brambles. And that's what I'm taking out. Two foot. About 0.7 of a metre. Satisfying. I didn't realise it. I didn't realise it was as deep as this. I've never seen it dug out, and it just shows what um, what's in it. It's all sediment. There's different layers of uh, sediment. It's like a zebra of silt types. But of course, it's a hard dike to do. It's it's not straight. It's quite meandering. This is the other way. Just goes to the bottom. So the water level's gone down a bit now, so I can get some more of this uh, um, slumping out done. So this was done out, what, five or six years ago? And this is quite a little ditch, and yet, it's literally probably five or six inches of uh, weed die back and decay in the bottom. Chop the weeds off there already with a bucket. And I'll swing it round. It's running back uphill, so I'm actually doing it, ditching this out from the top down, and I should really do it from the bottom up. Look at that.
So I'm starting the week out on a technical start. So I've got um, these actuators. There's a micro switch in and they, they can, my head torch is going off and on. There's a micro switch in and it fails or it sticks. So it renders the, the RAM useless. So it's just a case of getting a new, a new micro switch on. And I've got four out at the minute. So I'm gonna get them all off, ready to take in for a refurb. So this one has come off the end, so I'm guessing it's got a bolt in this end. So I'll just have a look. Hopefully it's a quick, quick fix. They're pretty, they're pretty good value to service anyway. So it's not that end. There's, there's the micro switch, just in there. That's, that's the normal fail, but it wasn't gonna switch off because that couldn't go in because it wasn't connected in the back. I don't know if I just push all this out. So after all that, I've concluded this is just too delicate to do on the floor. I'm gonna take it in. Yeah, there's, my, there's more wires and it's not as simple as I thought, so. I'll just get another surface exchange on that. I'm not using the knife here because I want to claw it out like a, a weed comb. So look at that, look. This is a little ditch. It's literally hydroponic weeding. There's no soil in there at all, it's just pure root matter. Total water, totally, you know, totally blocking water from um, flow. Got that in one pass nearly. Bring up this side again because I was a bit high. chopping here, God, it pulls everything out, all the little serrations on the knife just grip all the roots. Oh, I thought that was a, <laughs> it's still bad. So we'll come up here with a rotavator and chop all this up, the conditions are a bit better, a little bit drier. photos and see if I can find the um, picture of when I did this the last, I'm sure it's four years ago, but it's probably double that. So why is the water that brown colour? Well, good question. That's cars of the ochre, which is a pigment. I've got a bit deep again. So when we flush the land drains out, it's, the ochre comes out in such, well, it, 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 what's the word? It turns into a bit of a solid after a while, and that's what bungs the under drains, which drain the fields. So we go through with our jetta, and flush that ochre, or the, set, the settled ochre out of the, the drains. Find a video on that. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> oh, for God's sake! <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> How could you make such hard work of that? behind the yard um, just doing another ditch before sort of all the priority ones are finished it's going quite well lovely day it's warming up I'm just doing a pass just to get the bulk of the weed out of the way so I can see and then um, I'm just flipping it around here it's kind of how it is pre getting there now this is one of the drains I phoned and um, filmed two weeks ago when it was over the top of the height of the, the bank. Uh, we've still got the legacy of some puddles over there, which are, well, area, areas we're gonna have to address with draining or under draining. So this, so this bank on the far side is very stunned. So as soon as I touch it, it wants to collapse. It's like a big blamange. The soil's all full of water. Well, the soil is so heavy and dense with water. It just wants gravity to take it down fill it, fill the diking. I've just got to be very careful when I bring the, the dipper arm right in because it can catch the, the underside of the boom. Look at the colour of that water there, full of ochre. So I'm just making it look pretty so when I come, come back after lunch I can scoop the bottom out without the knife to claw all the reed roots out as I go. So it's just quite hard, I just gotta feel, feel the feel the bank on the other side, just pushing and pulling. Just so don't claw the bank down. So I'm working my way back now. A lot quicker. Don't have to be so precise. So I'm not using the knife. This I'm using it as a comb to sort. Of, if you treat it like bits in your hair, I'm trying to deep knit but in ditch format. So the little the knife blades are just combing all the weeds out instead of instead of just chopping through them and clawing the whole lot out. So as I pull it up, there's all the roots out as well. Rather good job. It's our mate back again, doing a bit of fishing. Good, looking good. I'll take that. Spot the partridges. <laughs> Wonder if they're English or French. Oh, crikey. Crikey, more, more coming now. Oh, more. <laughs> Sweet. There's spilt grain down there as well on the floor. They look happy. So it's a Saturday morning. We're gonna have a go play on mowing now, another little burgy. And we're getting old now, quite striped mower. Nice morning for it. The guys are lifting beets over at South End. And, uh, get some mowings and ready for cultivation. First, I'm going to wash the windows. Awful. Look at that glare. What is it? Rosa. 
So my buddy and me, Rosa, we're just getting around the fields. I'm house sitting today, so uh, this is my version of uh, babysitting. It's going well. On the drone footage, ooh, three weeks ago, this was 50% underwater. Uh, you wouldn't know now. You wouldn't know. The uh, Environment Agency up behind me, just about seeing it on machines in the background, and they're actually repairing the uh, breach in the bank, which is marvellous. I didn't really expect to see them. These uh, government agencies tend to work slow, so it's really great to have them here. Apologies for the wind noise. Uh, I've left my GoPro somewhere, I can't find it, so I've lost all this year's footage of our bait lifting this season. So I've put some videos of the last time we had sugar beet in this field. Mm -hmm. 